a man who was about to take his wedding photos, yet his eyes were tightly shut. And it was this seemingly unintelligent, even somewhat unattractive man, who recounted to the audience the story of an ordinary individual's promise to his father spanning half a century. This is the best movie of Korea. Get your tissues ready for this deeply touching film. Welcome to Oriental Frames. Thank you for your watching and subscribing. In 1950, amidst the outbreak of the Korean War, a surge of refugees flocked to the harbor, seeking to board U.S. military ships and escape the turmoil. And right as Deoksu was poised to step onto the ship, carrying his sister on his back, a hand desperate for survival abruptly seized her shoulder, tearing her away from his back. Though he clung tightly to his sister's clothing, the fabric gave way, and she slipped away. He kept apologizing to his father, berating himself, and voicing his remorse for losing his sister. He was set on descending to find her. Yet, his father intervened, not reproaching him, but rather draping him in his own coat. After saying these words, his father hastily went back down the ship. But before he could find his daughter, the ship had already started to move. His father shouted, instructing them to go to their aunt's house first, he would come find them after locating their sister. Watching their father, Deoksu, and their mother grow distant, tears streaming down their faces, his father's actions showed Deoksu what it meant to be the head of the family. As a result, Deoksu carried a lifelong burden of guilt and responsibility. Not long after, their mother brought Deoksu and his younger siblings to their aunt's house. The aunt opened a grocery store in the international market. Learning that their brother's fate was uncertain, the aunt silently shed tears. In an era of raging war, the aunt's family was far from affluent, able to offer only a pot of rice porridge and a small storage room for them to live in. Deoksu tightly held his mother's hand, secretly vowing to uphold the family. To ease his mother's load, Deoksu attended school while carrying his sister on his back. Here, he got to know a boy named Dalgu, who would become his lifelong friend. Dalgu treated him kindly, teaching him to shine shoes for others during his free time. Discovering that Deoksu had never tasted chocolate, Dalgu often played the clown to amuse American soldiers, trading his antics for a piece of chocolate. Even when facing bullying from older kids, Deoksu fiercely protected the chocolate, enduring bruises, then returning home to feed his younger siblings, only licking the residue from his palms. A decade had passed. Present-day Deoksu worked as a dock laborer, dedicating all his earnings to his mother to support his younger brother and sister's education. He held a dream of attending university and aspiring to become a ship captain in the future. However, due to a lack of funds, he could only sneak into classrooms to listen to lectures, often ending up embarrassingly kicked out. Fortunately, his younger brother was a diligent student and got accepted into Seoul's top university. Yet, facing the daunting tuition fees, the younger brother contemplated giving up. Their mother reassured him not to worry about the expenses, she and his older brother would find a way. At this moment, Deoksu abruptly pushed open the door, interrupting his younger brother. With a determined tone, he told his brother that university was a must and not to worry about the money. He knew of a high-paying job, a suggestion he'd received from Dalgu not too long ago. Back then, West Germany was recruiting a large number of miners, promising substantial rewards in just three years, but it came with significant dangers. Gazing at their father's picture on the wall and recalling his parting words, Deoksu made up his mind. He was determined to earn enough money to fund his younger brother's college education and provide his family with a better life. So, he abandoned his own studies and followed Dalgu's advice, heading to the West German mines. Though mentally prepared, the conditions much worse than their expectations. They toiled in the dark underground, working for over 10 hours a day, always vulnerable to accidents. Yet, even when faced with hardships, as long as he thought of his brother's tuition fees, Deoksu could endure the pain without shedding a tear. Late at night, however, the thought of his family thousands of kilometers away would bring silent tears due to longing and concern. Perhaps, kind-hearted individuals are often looked after by fate. During his limited free time, Deoksu encountered a beautiful girl named Youngja. Despite his lack of romance and humble background, his sincerity and honesty quickly captured Youngja's heart in that innocent era. Just as their relationship was blooming, fate didn't intend to easily grant them happiness. 
Due to a staff oversight, an early leakage occurred in the mine where Deoxu worked. Accompanied by a deafening noise, Deoxu found himself buried beneath the earth. In his weakened state, he glimpsed his father and struggled to report on the family situation. His mother remained healthy, his younger brother excelled and got into Seoul's top university. His sister, though becoming more beautiful, still made occasional mistakes. He missed his father terribly and felt guilty for losing his sister all those years ago. At this moment, Young Ja was also diligently searching for Deoxu's whereabouts. She learned about Deoxu's accident from a fellow worker. However, the person in charge, fearing a secondary explosion, was reluctant to send rescue teams. In desperation, Young Ja knelt down on both knees, clasped her hands together, and pleaded desperately. But the person in charge remained coldly indifferent and refused to take action. Witnessing this scene, the other workers couldn't bear it any longer. Armed with tools, they broke through the barriers. At that moment, no one worried about a second explosion, their determination was solely focused on rescuing their fellow countrymen. After more than 10 hours of effort by all the workers, Deoxu was finally rescued. Their bond deepened after this ordeal. Under Young Ja's attentive care, Deoxu's health recovered quickly, but his visa was about to expire. He hoped that Young Ja could return to Korea with him. She refused, but as soon as she left the hospital room, Young Ja couldn't hold back her tears. It wasn't that she didn't want to go back with Deoxu, but in these difficult times, she also carried the responsibility of supporting her family, and no matter how hard life was outside, returning home had to be a bright affair. After three years apart, the family finally gathered happily once more. With the money Deoxu brought back, his younger brother finished college, and they moved into a bigger house. Deoxu also had more leisure time, but he would occasionally help his aunt manage the shop. And on this day, the person he had been longing for finally returned to Korea, the two of them went to the seaside to have a meal together. Young Ja said she was pregnant with Deoxu's child. It turned out that the day before she left West Germany, Deoxu found Young Ja again and expressed his love. After singing Young Ja's favorite love song, they shared their first kiss. In those days, there wasn't really such a thing as a first love, once they fell in love, it was for a lifetime. They entered the realm of marriage, but when they were taking a family photo, Deoxu tightly closed his eyes. Later, through years of self-study, he finally received an acceptance letter from a maritime university. He never forgot his dream of becoming a captain. But on the same day, his sister had a heated argument with their mother because she was unhappy with the dowry. She wanted their mother to sell the house to buy her a more decent dowry. And all of this was heard by Deoxu. He didn't blame his sister for her lack of understanding. Instead, his heart recalled his father's instructions once again. These instructions weighed even heavier on him after the passing of their elderly aunt. Their alcoholic uncle, wanting to sell the shop, presented a dilemma. Without their aunt's shop, wouldn't their father have no way of finding his way home? Faced with their uncle's stubbornness, Deoxu promised to provide the money to buy it. To gather enough money for his sister's dowry and to buy the shop, Deoxu reluctantly had to give up his dream of becoming a captain. All because of his father had told him that he was the head of the family and that family always came first. At this time, it was during the Vietnam War, and the front lines required a large number of logistical personnel. The compensation offered was also substantial. However, no matter how tempting the offer, Deoxu's mother wouldn't allow him to risk his life again. His wife, Young Ja, was equally opposed to the idea. Eventually, disregarding his family's objections, Deoxu embarked on the Vietnam battlefield once more, driven by that promise. The brutality of the battlefield far exceeded imagination. Even when away from the front lines, they were frequently ambushed by the enemy. Despite being battered and bruised by explosions, Deoxu's first thought was always to protect his hard-earned wages. In his heart, that money was more valuable than his own life. During a retreat operation, while rescuing a drowning girl, Deoxu was unfortunately shot in the thigh. This injury left him permanently disabled. 
but two years later, when he returned to his family's side, there was still no trace of bitterness on Deoxu's face. However, his wife couldn't help but notice the disability in his left leg. Relying on the money he earned with his life, Deoxu successfully purchased the shop, preserving his father's hope to return home and fulfilling his sister's wish for a generous dowry. On his sister's wedding day, Deoxu, standing in for their father, walked her down the aisle. Seeing her brother limping beside her, she suddenly matured and understood the years of sacrifice he had made. In the family photo, Deoxu closed his eyes tightly once more. Finally, Deoxu could consider his promise to his father fulfilled. He took good care of every member of his family, his only regret being that he hadn't found his lost sister and hadn't seen his father again, until a TV show was launched, aiming to help people reunite with family members lost due to war. Deoxu rushed to the scene as soon as he heard, tearfully providing details about his father and sister, even displaying the torn sleeve as evidence, hoping they would recognize him. However, despite the broadcast, there was no news. Deoxu never considered giving up, repeatedly comforting himself that they just hadn't seen the show yet. Then, one day, the TV station called again, claiming to have found Deoxu's father. Excited, he arrived at the location only to recognize immediately that the person was not his father. His mother, watching in front of the TV, lowered her head in disappointment. Though Deoxu was also disheartened, he never lost hope. Not long after, the TV station called again, saying they had found someone who might be his sister. However, this woman spoke in English. The host translated for Deoxu, explaining that the woman was sent to an orphanage as a child and later adopted by Americans, living in the United States. They couldn't communicate directly, and the woman didn't seem to be his sister. Deoxu asked if his sister had a mole behind her ear, which made the woman freeze upon hearing. She then burst into tears and showed her ear, revealing the mole. Am I your sister? Not long after, the sister returned from abroad and lived with them, perhaps, Having finally witnessed her eldest daughter's wish fulfilled, the mother left this world shortly after. Many years passed, and Deoxu had turned into a gray-haired old man. His home was filled with his wife, his brother, his sister, his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. The joyful laughter and voices of the large family gathering created an atmosphere of warmth and happiness. Suddenly, Deoxu rose from his seat and left the group, retreating to his room. He sat on the floor for a long time, looking at his father's photo on the table, tears streaming down his face involuntarily. <laughs> Deoxu held his father's only remaining coat and wept uncontrollably in his room, where he was alone. He couldn't cry too loudly, for this sorrow belonged to him alone. In this small space, separated from the living room by only one wall, he silently released the accumulated grievances of his entire life. This is a movie based on a true story from South Korea. Deoxu, at a young age, 
took over his father's role and became the head of the family. In the toughest times, when he had to support a large household, he was the pillar, the unyielding elder brother. He had no personal desires, he could sacrifice everything for his family, for his younger siblings. His tears in a foreign land, his helplessness amidst gunfire and battles, it seemed that no one knew, and no one cared. Every penny he earned was backed by his blood, sweat, and tears, a fact that could move one to tears. Fortunately, though incredibly challenging, his younger siblings grew up, and with grandchildren filling the house with joyful noise, he finally fulfilled the promise to his father. Diaksu should still be content and happy. No voiceover can replicate the charm of the original film. A great movie deserves to be experienced in its full plot. Thank you for your watching and subscribing.